Episode 10, Dark Frost Peaks, Upper Mount Thokax. Mount Thokax is believed to be the largest and tallest mountain in all of Dagothar. The cavern-filled mountain was now occupied by Trollocs. Though the outside keeps were guarded, the Trollocs performed no maintenance other than piling up large rocks to plug crumbling walls, doorless entrances, or to seal off numerous caves. Thokax was the ancestral home of the Nimbolk dwarves from ancient times, the original race that all dwarven clans claim descent. Upper Thokax is inhabited by the Trollocs civilization within the ancient dwarven cavern suburbs and abandoned mines, a nasty race born long ago when the Hamakon trolls took captive hundreds of orc females in some unrecorded war. The Trollocs were parasites. Using only captured weapons and armor normally obtained from the goblins, mountain orcs, ogres, and plundered tombs. Many wielded the simplest clubs or spears they could fashion. Though lazy and unintelligent, the Trollocs were not stupid. None dared venture into lower Mount Thokax. Things dwelt amidst the deeper Nimbolk ruins. Legends afar still claimed that Lower Thakox was haunted. General Zulrig of Legion II stood upon the observation platform raised by the Pygmy Goblin engineers. Go in and exterminate the trolls. They cannot serve our ends. He commanded the Black Elf Headhunter. The Elvachi lowered his visor, raised four scimitars into the air with his four arms. Lowering the two blades on the right and pointing forward, two hornback captains blew their horns. Two companies of armored underworld orcs marched into the crumbling citadel and into the mountain. The elf signaled that companies three and four were to fall in behind them. Zolrig was a bloodborne orc, the smaller species of hornback orc, but what he lacked in size he made up for in brutality. His assignment was to secure Mount Thokax and locate the old abandoned Undervane highways, a network of underground corridors that connected all of the former dwarf strongholds. Somehow, the warlord knew that the Undervane system had fallen into disuse and was largely forgotten. A forward scout, fresh blood spatter painted on his armor, approached. There are prisoners, sir. Er, uh... Slaves, about 600 goblins, a few ogres, and a score of humans. General Zulrig's head jerked at hearing this. Men? Oh, not Baradai, sir, replied the orc quickly, referring to the dreaded deep men of Hollow Realm, a race of underworld humans hated by all. The scourge of Hollow Realm. No, no, sir, these be a wild sort, surface-dwelling kind, primitive, General Zulrig pondered this news. His briefing with the other generals had disclosed that this region of the surface world harbored no humans. Men were not to be found for hundreds of miles to the east. Chain the slaves, then. As General Zulrig observed from his platform along the timber line of Mount Thokax, he had to avert his eyes from the bright burning piles of Trollocs that the Titan Ogres and the Dusk Giants dragged out of the caves. Many of the trolls fought to get out of the flames, but were held down with long, fiery poles and spears. One Dusk Giant banged large rocks against Trolloc heads before tossing them into the flaming piles. These filthy creatures were despised even in the underworld and were very hard to kill because of their unique ability to regenerate lost or damaged tissue and bone. In the night sky, the general could clearly see the heavy wing mords carrying their Elvachi riders as they led the assault of the Terragants against those trolls that had climbed the mountain to escape and those few gathered at cave entrances that were high above along the mountain face. Deep inside Upper Thawkax, 
Hundreds of umber slogs terrorized the Trollocs. In blind panic, many of the trolls ran right into the ranks of blade-wielding orcs, ogres, and giants. Zulrig grinned wickedly. The umber slogs were the vanguard in this war, the spearhead. What perfect marauders! Why did we not use these wonderful beasts in the Baradai Wars? Where did they come from? Why is there such secrecy about them? He wondered. He had wanted to ask some of the Dark Elf sub-commanders about the slogs, but this required admitting his ignorance. The hideous animals only obeyed the Elvachi, but as far as any other underworlders knew, the Dark Elves had never before had or used umber slogs. The origin of the six-legged devourers was an enigma. Where did they come from? While musing over this, a headhunter and another dark elf, a two-armed warlock, approached and stepped up to the platform. Zolrig had not seen them appear and moved toward his position. Suppressing his surprise and suspecting witchery, he looked into the abyssal eyes of the dark elf mage. General, a couple slogs were put down by the Trollocks, and a third was lost to a troll giant. Two others ventured into Lower Thakax. They have not returned. Then they are lost. Both the Orc General and the Warlock knew of the cavernous ruins of Nimbolk far below. The vast underground city's lowest areas were accessible from the underworld's highest cave systems, and many were the tales of parties disappearing when nearing too close to Lower Thakax. What of the underveins? They have been located, sir. Blocked off only by loose piles of boulders that are being removed even now. Good. Zulric turned and looked down the mountain at the scouts of the two legions hidden further down by the thick forest. Legion 6 was commanded by Bruick Cave Raider, a Minotrork barbarian who had tamed the ferocious Garbolg herd that they had brought with them from the underworld. Legion 7 was commanded by the Underchief of the Grim, the giant dwarves of Hollow Realm. The Grim were the only race not conquered by the Warlord. They came as allies. These two hidden legions were the only ones not made up of hornback orcs, and they had been given a very different assignment. They would be advancing upon the enemy from below, traveling through the long abandoned Undervane highways built by the Nimbolt dwarves. Convey the order to withdraw. No need pursuing the Trollocks. Those remaining cannot hinder Legion 6 and 7. Provide the Underchief and General Cave Raider escorts to the Underveins. We shall camp and rest. We will march under the burning disc. As you command, the Warlock an answered, then hesitated. Have you more to report? Uh, General, the Giants are disturbed. The Slog Slayer, the Troll Giant, well... When it saw the Dusk Giants, it offered to share the Umberslog. It did not act hostile, but regarded the Duskum as family, though we know it could kill easily one or more of them. What did, what did they do? They are talking to him now. They speak the same language? Zulrig did not hide his surprise. The Dusk Giants are bothered because the Troll Giant is kin to them, not fully troll like the Trollocks being part orc. The Duskum asked that you accept the Troll Giant into their ranks. The Dark Elf paused as Zulrug thought this over. The Elf did not have to tell him that this could get messy if he ordered the Giants to kill the Troll Giant. Or put him in chains. Zulrug thought about the addition of this mighty beast to his legion. Perhaps the Warlord will be pleased. Grant this for now, but tell them the matter has been, has been put to the warlord. I will not face the enforcer should this be a mistake. The black elf nodded, and he with the headhunter 
departed in a wisp of dark smoke. The warlord was feared and respected by all, but everyone was terrified of the Enforcer. Zolrig nodded to the pygmy goblin looking up at him, and then he watched as the pagai launched the signal bladder high into the sky. This concludes Episode 10.